morning, everyone. So when I was preparing this talk, I was like, how am I going to go and build peace and talk about the private sector when some people imagine the private sector a bit like, you know, this, like evil incarnate. And, you know, I kind of understand them because I'm an idealist. And in 2016, I quit my job at a big consulting for company because I didn't want to spend my days making the 1% a 1% richer. Which might make you think, so how did you exactly end up working in a tech startup when we all know the controversy surrounding tech startups? And a startup that has a big oil extracting company as one of its main clients. And well, you know, mainly because our offices are kind of pretty. So that's, that's a plus. But yeah, you know them, Elena, you know them. <laughs> yeah. But realistically speaking, it's because I believe in the work that we do. And whatever your thoughts on the private sector are, the truth is that they have a role to play in making society more peaceful and stable. Because unlike four-year government agendas or 12-year projects by you know, foreign organizations, private companies are in countries for the long run. And their operations benefit from having stable, prosperous societies. Now, this is a highly complex topic, and I feel that in the eight-ish minutes that I have left, I could barely scratch the surface. So what I'm going to do is give you an example of one of the companies that we work with and the things that we're doing with them, which is use technology to help them understand their context better so that they can take better decisions that have more impact and reduce risks. Because we believe in the role that private companies have to, pay, have to play in building peace and stability, since 2017, we have been engaging with private companies in Latin America, Eastern Europe, and Africa. And like I mentioned, one of these companies is a big extractive company that operates in Colombia. And historically, this company has been operating in highly complex areas. Uh, why am I calling them complex? Because as you can see in the map, or well, maybe not, but basically historically, the areas in Colombia that have been labeled as key for the extraction of resources overlap, overlap almost perfectly with areas with high presence of armed insurgent groups. And that means that companies like our client have historically been operating in areas with little to no state presence. And that means a, a lot of tension with the local communities who live there. Uh, the topic of the discussion is the role that these companies have to play engaging these communities and increasing the quality of life of the people there. So like, why, sh why should we care about this? Well, for once, because if these communi communities boycott their operations, one of the things that they tend to do is bomb the pipelines. And that has a massive environmental impact. But that's not the only reason. This company is half publicly owned. And because they're the largest company in Colombia, they're also the biggest taxpayers. Which means that if they go bankrupt, the country as a whole suffers. And not only that, but the, most of their workforce is local. I know that like, I just went crazy putting pictures of Colombia because I love it. But um, in countries like Colombia, the private sector represents 90% of the workforce. And like Christine mentioned earlier, if you have unemployed people, they tend to you know, lead to more violence. So what are we doing with them? We are providing them with tools to understand their context better, to do stakeholder mapping, GIS mapping, and online media monitoring. And we're working with our partners to enable them to do that. These clients, like many of our clients, they have a lot of information already. They've been gathering data 
on the local communities. They've been gathering data on the reality on the field for many, many, many years. But generally, they're all siloed and they don't talk to each other. And if you have information scattered across several emails and Excel sheets and Word documents, you're missing out on information. So what we're doing with them is centralize everything in one tool. And by having everything centralized, the different departments can talk to each other better instead of competing with each other. And that ultimately means that they have more data to base their decisions on. And this means that the operations that they do ultimately will have lower risks and higher impact. In a way, like Don mentioned, we all have a responsibility when it comes to building peace. And we can't just rely on governments or donor organizations. We need all stakeholders in society to build most, more prosperous places. And that list also includes the private sector. Because, like I mentioned before, they're in the countries for the long run and they have a lot of st at stake. They benefit from building more prosperous, stable societies. So instead of demonizing the private sector, instead of imagining them you know, as Dr. Evil, we should engage them in conversation and appeal to their own interests. Because they have a role to play in building more peaceful, stable communities and technology can enable them. And that answers the question to, of how I ended up in a tech startup that has an oil company as one of its main clients. Because I believe in the work that we do. I believe that private companies have a role to play in making society more peaceful and stable, and that technology can enable them. Thank you very much.